Oh my god, what was I thinking? <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Anthony Turnham, professional photographer here. And if like me, you're a Luminar Neo user, just recently we had some really great news and that was the most significant update for Luminar Neo yet. This free update version 1.06 has seen the introduction of some fundamental tools I felt were missing. So among these latest additions to Luminar Neo is my absolute favorite thing, which is the AI masking. And we've also seen the return of the radial and linear masking features as well, along with the histogram. There's a lot, there's a lot that's been added to this. So I'm really excited because this is my first actual edit that I'm gonna be sharing with you guys on my channel inside of this new version 1.06. So let's take a look and see what it can do. We're gonna be working on this photograph of the Church of the Good Shepherd in Lake Tikapo, New Zealand. Now the first thing we wanna do before we even begin our edit is just look at our photo and have a general game plan. So in this photo, I really wanna bring our attention to the church, which is getting pretty dark on this shadow side. And also this beautiful mountain in the background, I feel like we could actually bring a little bit more interest into that and also the foliage just on the right hand side of the church is just getting a little bit dark and contrasty. I also think it'd be interesting to play with the brightness levels just to see if we can't darken down the sky, brighten up this central area here, bring our focus here and also reduce the busyness of the foreground here because as much as I love all this frosty grass going on here it's pretty distracting to the eye so we're going to see if we can even darken that down and potentially blur it and take it out of focus slightly as well. So the first thing we want to do is is jump into our develop raw section and you guys will notice straight away the addition of the histogram whoop whoop get in if you don't see your histogram just come to your photo right click or option click on a mac and from the context menu just come down to the bottom and you've got this option here show histogram so that's hidden come down show histogram you've also got the option to go through the different color channels just by clicking on the histogram so we can see the red green blue channels individually you've also got a combined histogram there or the multicolor view that shows you all colors at once, and I find this one to be the most useful. You'll also notice the circles in the top left and top right, very useful, I will get to those very shortly. First of all, I'm just gonna choose a camera flat profile, and straight away we just get a little bit more detail in the shadows and the highlights. I'm just gonna boost my exposure up ever so slightly, and now I'm able to make all of these changes whilst keeping an eye on the histogram. So if I grab smart contrast, for instance, and start boosting that up, you can see in the histogram that that's starting to get stretched out and that's obviously representing the light parts and the dark parts in the photo getting pushed further apart. Even though we're not at pure white, I feel like the detail in the sky is just getting a little bit bleached out. So I'm gonna bring the highlights down, boost the shadows up just a tints, and now I want to maximize the tonal range that Luminar has to work with for the rest of the edit. So if I just jump back to the combined view here by clicking on that a few times, I have the option to come down to the whites, grab that and start bringing that up until we start blowing out the whites. And the way that we can actually see when we're actually going to pure white now is by pressing J on the keyboard and that's gonna turn on our clippings here and here. So if I grab the exposure and start bringing that up, you'll see that we're starting to get red pixels appearing on our screen. And that is a warning for us. That is Luminar's way of saying, these pixels that are indicated in red now have bleached out to pure white. We've got no detail in there whatsoever, which is obviously not what we want. So by pressing the J key and turning this option on, we can actually make sure that we're not blowing out any pixels in the highlights or in the shadows. So the same if I grab the blacks and bring that all the way down. Anything that's been crushed down and hit pure black is now displaying as a blue pixel. And so that's our warning at the other end of the tonal range. So by moving the white and the black points, that's one way of controlling this. However, that can actually start to introduce too much contrast in your scene. So what I prefer to do is maybe just move them a little bit and then make those final adjustments just by moving the upper right point on the curves here, which represents the white point, and then doing the same in the bottom left just by moving that along. And so I push it until I start to see these blue pixels appearing, and then I have the option just to move it back just ever so slightly. And now we're very close to having a full tonal range in our image, and oftentimes that's a really great starting point for any edit. Okay, let's start building this edit, and we're gonna start using the masking, which you can now see appears to the right-hand side of our adjustment. So I can click here, and I have option to my masking. Now you've got the option to either set up your mask before you apply the adjustments, 
or you can apply adjustments and then mask it off. It's entirely up to you. So in this case, we're gonna start by creating a mask. And what I would like to do is use a linear gradient, which if I pull it up here, you'll see that as the name implies, we have a straight lined gradient. So below the bottom line here, we have 100% of whatever adjustment we apply. At the center line here, we have 50%. And at the very top point, that's the zero point. And so those two outermost lines are representing our gradation between 100% of the effect to 0% and we smoothly transition between those two points. Okay, so what do I actually want to do with this adjustment? Well, I spoke at the beginning how I just wanted to dull down the busyness of this foreground right here. So what I'm going to do is just put it on an angle so that we're actually matching the form of the slope of the hill here. And now what I'm going to do is come into my adjustments and you guys are probably familiar with structure AI. And that's what happens if you crank it all the way to 100. It's going to add a lot of crunchy detail into your photo, which sometimes can be great, but you can also take it into that negative territory. And that's just going to soften things off. So if I click on the eye to toggle our before and our after, you can see how all of this area has just got softened up. And if you want to take it further, obviously we can boost that amount, but I don't want to take it too far. That's going to do just nicely. But one other thing that I'd like to do to this area that I've selected here is actually darken it down because our eye naturally goes to the brighter part of images, areas of more contrast. So anything that we can do as a photo editor to actually bring down that contrast and brightness, that can be a good thing if it's an area that you don't want people to look at. And so what I can do, rather than having to remask this area and use a tool that's gonna to darken it down, I can come into my masking section, move out of the linear gradient tool. And what I can do, if I click show, you'll see that mask again. What we need to do is just copy this mask so that I can reuse it elsewhere. So I'm gonna copy it, come up to the develop section so that I can use the exposure slider just to darken things down, bring the highlights down as well, maybe even dull the whites down, bring the shadows up just slightly so these dark areas aren't going too much towards black. And we'll jump into the temperature slider here and go towards a blue, because I wanna create a blue shadow area through here. And all I need to do now is come into my masking option, mask actions, and now we're gonna paste the same mask that we had before. So watching the image, here we go, three, two, one, let's paste that on, and bada bing, bada bong, there we go, we've got a blue shadow area through there. And if we wanna refine that adjustment, we absolutely can do that. We can make it darker if we wanted to, not lose those shadows, and maybe just bring that temperature up just a little bit. Okay, let's have a little look at our before and our after before and after and you can see just with that slight addition of that linear gradient where we've darkened down the foreground and just softened the focus slightly with negative clarity we've been able to bring our viewers eye more into this area of greater detail in the center of the frame and that's a really good take home bit of info a lot of what you do when you're doing photo editing is actually controlling where your viewer is looking within your frame based on tonal values how bright or dark something is you can use temperature as well so something that's warmer will pop out more than something's cooler so by cooling off that shadow in the foreground along with that blurring effect we're helping to give our viewer a little bit of a nudge and say look at the center of the frame this is the important part so that's a really good concept to keep in mind when you're doing your photo editing continually ask yourself where do I want my viewer to look and then using Luminar Neo's new masking tools it's really easy to control individual elements within your frame so I'll show you a couple more such as how we can manipulate the architecture in this and also the mountains in the background as well okay we've seen the linear gradient mask in action so that we can control some adjustments on the church and the mountains in the background. Okay, one thing I'd like to do is actually grab the structure AI, and this time I'm gonna increase it. Let's push that all the way to 100, just so we can see what it's doing for now. And you can see that it's bringing out a lovely rich detail and all the stonework in the church here. We're also getting a lot of detail in the mountains as well. But at the same time, I feel like it's bringing out far too much detail in all the grass on the hill here. Well, let's jump into the masking section and see what we can do. I think this would be a really good time to jump into AI mask. So now I've clicked that Luminar's Magic AI is going to work in the background to analyze our photo and see what elements it can find. And here you go, we've got sky, flora, architecture, mountains, and natural ground. And if I click one of these, so for example, I click sky, with minimal fuss, I now have a sky selection. What about if I click mountains? I can turn the sky off, and now I can make adjustments only to the mountains, which is brilliant. 
So what if I want to edit the mountains and the church as well? Well, hopefully if I click architecture, that will also select the church. Well, as impressive as this is, it isn't perfect. And you can see certain areas where the mask has been missed on the mountains here, where the trees meet the mountains. There's also a bit of haloing going on. And so it's not perfect. It gets us very close. And if we wanted to, we could just add to that just by coming into the brush clicking paint and making the brush a little bit smaller. I'm using my left bracket key just to reduce the size of that. And I could come in and just make paint in those areas if I want to. But there's actually a better way. So I'm gonna jump back out of the brush and come down to the mask actions and just clear everything. So everything we've done so far is gone. I'm gonna jump back into AI mask. I'm gonna select my sky again. And now when I come out of AI mask, I've got the option to actually invert that. So if we show it so we can see what's going on and I click invert, I'm gonna get everything apart from the sky. And that's got me a lot closer to what I want in terms of the architecture and the mountains. But unfortunately, now we have all of this foreground here. So one thing you can do is actually subtract things from the mask. So if I know I don't want this natural ground here, by clicking it, it's turned it on but then by clicking it again, I'm actually removing it. And so now we're even closer with our mask. We've got a little bit of spill just over here, but now that is so much easier just to clean that up just by coming to the erase version of the brush, put the strength all the way to 100, make the size slightly bigger, and just paint the little bit away that we don't want. Super easy. Now if I click on the eye tool here, we can see our before and after, and that effect is applied only where we created that mask. Now I said we, but Luminar Neo pretty much did that for us. We've leveraged its AI to save us a whole heap of time. And that's probably the most exciting thing about this mask AI is absolutely you can come in and paint masks yourself by hand, but leveraging that AI is a real time saver and I love it. In the same way we darken down the foreground here, I'm thinking if we darken down the top of the sky slightly, that's gonna help create what I call a light sandwich, where our eye is drawn to this brighter, more interesting part at the center of the frame, rather than that eye drifting off to the top of the frame because it's so bright. So what can we do? We can just jump into the develop section, and I'm gonna bring the exposure down, maybe bring the highlights down slightly, and maybe come down to the temperature slider because I feel like we're just getting a little bit yellow in the clouds here. So if we just push that temperature just into the blue slightly more and maybe raising the tint ever so slightly is just gonna help us out there, keep those clouds more neutral. Okay, I'm happy with the top of the sky here. Now it's time to mask that in. For sure, we could come into AI mask and just click on sky, but the slight lack of accuracy in the mask is gonna catch us out here. Because if I jump back here, you're gonna see the haloing around the top of the mountains, and that's no good. So let's clear that. And often when you're working with skies, a linear gradient is the best way to go. But I think we're gonna be able to not only put our linear gradient in, which I'm gonna drag a little further than I really ideally want, but it's gonna go from the top all the way down to the bottom of the mountain. So we are gonna get some slight darkening on the top of the church and the mountains as well. And it's not too bad if we look at our before and after, it's pretty good. It's also helping us out because it's darkening down the snow that was just starting to get a little bit bleached out as per those red warnings when I turn this off. However, where it's going over the top of the church and we're getting this darkening effect here, I don't really like that. So let's see what we can actually do. But let's jump into the masking that we just set up before. Let's click on show so we can see what's going on. And the fading off of the red down here indicates that we are getting some of that adjustment happening on the top of this church here. So what can we do? Let's go into AI mask. If we click on architecture, that's gonna add the church in for us. But if we click it again, it's taken it away. Oh, wow, I mask, you've let me down there. As you can see from around the edge of the church, there is some haloing going on. And sometimes if you're only applying minimal adjustments, it doesn't matter, you're never gonna see that. However, if you wanna be a little bit more aggressive with your changes, such as I'm being here, that can catch you out. So you do need to be aware of that. So this is version one of the tool and it is no doubt gonna be getting better with each subsequent update. If you end up with a mask that's not perfect, it's not the end of the world, at least you're a lot closer to what you're after and it's pretty easy to fix up. Let's take a look. Let's see if we can't make a smoother transition by using the brush tool, using arrays, and let's drop the strength down to around 50%. I'm gonna click once and just sort of paint over this area and do another paint line there and just focus just around that area where we've got that little anomaly in the mask. There we go, we've got our nice transition from dark through to light in the sky and it's not affecting the building at all. I'm gonna press the J key just to get rid of those little red warnings for the highlights. Let's look at our before 
and our after, before and after. Okay, we're moving on nicely. What I'd like to do now is just brighten up this central area here. So we'll have a darker extremity around the edge of the frame, brighter foreground, bit like a vignette really. However, I'm not gonna use the vignette tool. We're gonna do that with the develop tool because that gives us just a little bit more refinement. So there's several ways that we could brighten up this area through the center here, but one of the easiest ways is just to put a point in the center of the curve here. And so we're, by bringing this up, we're brightening the mid-tones of our image. Let's check what it looks like with a before and an after, before and after. Okay, the highlights are getting a little bit blown out there, so let's just make sure we're controlling those. And we can boost the shadows as well if we want to. So if we view the before and after, you can see that currently the whole image is just getting brightened up with that adjustment. So again, let's jump into masking, and this time we're gonna use a radial gradient. Oh, I love this one. Okay, we're gonna click in the center and draw out. So this type of mask shares similarities with our linear gradient. Everything in this center circle here has none of the effect, and then we have our transition from this circumference here all the way out to this one here, so from zero to 100. But we don't want this. If I show our before and after of this actual tool, before, and after we're brightening up around the edge of the frame. And that's not what we want. We want the opposite of what we've created. So I'll come back here and let's show our mask again so you can see what's going on. And this time we want to invert it. So that brightening adjustment, that is gonna be applied to the center of the frame with a nice smooth transition towards the outside. So let's hide the mask and we can now see the effect. See that brightening going on just through here. However, because it's a circle, we've got a little bit of spill going on onto the foreground down here. And we can remove that in several ways. That's the really nice thing about these masking features. So I could jump into the AI mask, click on the natural ground, and that's gonna add all of that into the mask that we created. And we click it again, and this time it's subtracted it. So that brightening effect is now predominantly on the areas we want with a nice transition out. Very close to what we're after. We just wanna tackle this area where we had a little bit of an anomaly. So I need to go into my brush, make sure I'm on arrays, go to 100% and just quickly paint that out. Now we'll come back to the adjustment so that we can see the effect that it's having. Here's our before, here's our after, and you can see that we've brightened up those shadow areas exactly where we want them. If you're one of those people that's been on the fence about Luminar Neo up till now, I can assure you that this latest update has been a huge jump forward. If you'd like a free trial, I've got a link in the description below. And if you think it'd be a good fit for your photo editing, I've also got a discount code at Sky10 that you're welcome to use through that link to save yourself some money. One of the things I love with editing in Luminar Neo is I can just keep going deeper and deeper with my edit, but you gotta draw the line somewhere, so I won't do too much more. I think for this one, because we've added quite a bit of clarity, we're getting quite crunchy in all the details through here. A nice bit of one of my favorite tools, Mystical, will just soften that up nicely. And that just helps to add a nice ethereal glow to where the sun is hitting all the snow here. And just to help harmonize the color palette, I'm gonna apply a LUT. So if we come down to, let's do color punch cold, that's pushing more purples into the shadows, more blue into the midtones. If you push the amount all the way to 100, you can really see what it's doing, but obviously that's way too much. So we just wanna do this with a little bit of subtlety. A little goes a long way. Let's look at our before and our after of the mood tool, before and after. Let's have a little zoom in on the church and make sure we're happy and that there's no artifacts going on. Yep, that looks pretty good. Okay, time for my favorite bit. Let's have a look at our before and our after, our before and after. If we jump over into the edit section here, we can see all of the adjustments that have made up our edit so far. So what we can do is jump back in history and see how we built this up. So first of all, we took our raw photo and processed it using develop raw. So here was our before, and that's after we applied develop raw. Next, we softened down this area here with structure AI and borrowed that same mask to create more of a shadow effect in that foreground, helping to lead our viewer's eye up into the frame. We then went pretty heavy handed with structure AI all the way to 100 just to bring out all of the details in the church and the mountains behind. We then added a slight darkening linear gradient just to help draw our viewer's eye down from the top and keep it focused in around the church and the mountains as well. We further enhanced that by brightening this area in the center as well using a radial gradient. At this point, I felt the details were getting a little bit too crunchy on me. So what I did was added a mystical filter, which just helped to give that softened, dreamy look. And then finally, I just tried to harmonize the colors by accentuating those cool color tones by pushing some purples into the shadows by applying that color punch cold lookup table. So here was our before 
and after of that effect. So the overall effect was taking our photo from this through to this. Truth be told, I think I might have overbaked this one. However, that's not the point of this video. This is more about looking at Luminar Neo's new update 1.06 and all the cool masking features it now has inside it and how we can use them and leverage from Mask AI to improve our photo editing. Thank you so much for watching guys. If you've enjoyed, leave me a like. If you haven't subscribed already and you like my teaching style and you'd like to learn more, go ahead and subscribe. I'd love to have you along for the ride. Subscribe for the ride, subscribe. I always know it's time to finish the video when I start talking rubbish. So click on the other video and I'll see you in that one and I'll probably be more sane when you get to that video. <laughs> Woo. Oh my God. Oh, what was I thinking? <laughs>